In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a Roblox UGC item. I'm going to show you how to make a mask. It's something that's quite simple once you know it, but if you haven't done a mask before, it's not too easy. So I'm going to show you how to get started. First things first, we are going to want a dummy in our scene. If you don't know how to do this, I'll show you now really quickly. So you want to come here into Roblox Studio. You want to go to Plugins, go to Rig Build, and then import. I use a block rig. You can use any of these. And then go to the properties here on the right. And change the origin position to 0, 0,3, 0. And then just go here into the Explorer. Right click on the dummy. Export selection. And then save it on your PC somewhere you know. Now that you're in Blender, you're going to want to do File, Import, Wavefront OBJ. Make sure you know where it is on your computer. As you can see, I've got mine here. You should have two files, an OBJ and an MTL. Double click on the OBJ and it should bring it in. One thing you guys like to know is why my Blender has these like dark edges. Let's just go here and copy these settings. Just click this little drop down here, copy these settings and your Blender will look like mine. But it doesn't make a difference. Let's just get started. So we're going to do Shift A to add a mesh and we're going to add a plane. And now we're going to do R X 90. And as you see, that has rotated at 90 degrees on the X axis. And now if I do G and Z, I can kind of like move it up to just over the face like this. And I want to bring it in front. So we'll do G and Y. And basically what G does is moves it. And by pressing either X to move it on the X axis, Y on the Y axis and Z on the Z axis, it basically just locks it to that axis. It's really helpful. And now what we're going to do before we actually get started, started, we're going to click this little wrench here. And then we'll do add modifier. Add a mirror modifier and make sure it is on the X axis. And when you know that's on the X axis, another thing that's just helpful to do, if you're not working in the middle of your Blender workspace, this will glitch. So just go to the mirror object, click this little uh, drop dropper tool and then click on it and then click on the dummy. This will just make sure it mirrors perfectly. Next, we're going to do tab to go into edit mode and we're going to select these two verts on the side. Now what you want to do is go to the mirror modifier and turn on clipping, that is important. And then also do G to move and X to lock on the X axis and it won't let you move any further than here. But this is a good thing, this basically now means the mirrored sides, as you see it mirrors everything we do. And this is like the middle of the mirror and it means that the vertices can't move past it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get started. You can either press this little green minus Y here or you can press 1 on your number pad. And we can kind of like, you know, play around here and start seeing stuff. Z goes into wireframe mode. And basically what we're going to do is we're literally just going to go here and we're going to move this thing down to fit the head. We're going to do the same with this vertice right here. We're going to move it somewhere around there. And again, we're going to do this with this vertice and this vertice. And as you can see, it kind of, you know, it doesn't look like a mask yet, but it will very soon. So next, we're going to go back into that front view. We're going to do Control R and then scroll up a few times. Uh, do something like that. Left click twice and it should go and add some more topology. We're also going to do Control R again to add another loop there. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to add, uh, you know, add some more, more shape with this by going like this, kind of creating that curved mask look that we want to go for. But as you can see, right now, this is flat. We do not want it to be flat. A simple way to fix this is to select these three vertices here. Uh, you can select one vertice if you like and turn on proportional editing. You just click this little circle up here to turn it on. It should go blue. And I'm going to do G and Y to kind of like move it. And you can scroll up to like make it less and scroll down and it makes it bigger, the amount it affects. Basically what we can do now is we can use this to kind of like curve it a bit. We don't, even if it looks not weird now, we can make it look more normal by selecting one vertice up here, doing G and Y again, and kind of like curving this over in a way. And it, yeah, you just have to keep playing around with this proportional editing to kind of get the shape you want, if this makes sense. Just keep trying to get this kind of curvy look to your mask that you want to want to look like. You just keep going something like this. Sometimes you might not want to use proportional editing. I've just turned it off here and I'm just going to do it manually. Vertice by vertice. Moving it round. Something like this. And yeah, if we just keep getting some more shape here. I will show you one more trick in a minute that will make this so, so much better. Just make sure you don't have any clipping with your dummy. And you should be good. And as you see right now, this looks an absolute mess. Do not worry. I'm going to go and face shade smooth here just to just to smooth it a bit. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add another modifier. This modifier we're going to add is subdivision surface. 
as you can see, this instantly elevates your model, makes it look so much cleaner. I'm going to do G and Y just to bring it so that there's no clipping, just like that. And as you can see, we're actually starting to get more of that mass look. It is, is a little bit flat here. I'm going to fix that by selecting these vertices and maybe like moving them in a bit. So I'm going to turn on proportional editing and move, yeah, move these guys in. Something like that. I think that'll do. There we go. I think that looks a lot better. So basically what I've done there is I've just kind of like curled it round. It looks a lot more like a mask. There's one final modifier you want to add before you apply them all. And you want to go to add modifier and then you want to add a solidify modifier. And what this basically does is you can change the thickness and it basically just makes it thicker. What the amount turn on here is the uh, normals auto smooth thing in object data properties. And this will allow you to just change how thick it is and actually see it better. So as you see now, this is starting to look really good. This looks a lot like a mask. So if I go up to here and hide the dummy, whoops, you know, that, that could be a mask. And then you could model some eyes or something on it. If you want this to have a face on it, you could model them details, you know, using something like a cylinder. So if you want to have eyes, you might want to just maybe blow a poly. This is just an example. If you want to have eyes, you could just go boop, boop. This thing has eyes, you know, you could do something like that. Or you could go and texture it. If you didn't know how to texture, I will recommend you a video at the end of this video to show you how to do it. But next, I'm gonna show you how to make a strap. If you wanna have the, the mask strapped around the back of the head to actually hold it in place. So now we're gonna do this using paths. If we do shift A, mesh and add a plane, we're gonna get this plane and do G and X to move it off to the side. And we're actually gonna scale this down quite a bit. We're gonna do, um, S and Y to kind of create a rectangle as well. You need it to be that kind of rectangular shape. Next, we do Shift A, and add not a mesh, come down to curve and add a path. And as you see, there is like this little path line thing there. Keep it there for now. And we're gonna go back to this square. We do click on it and then do Alt C and convert it to a curve. And as you'll see, it kind of makes it look like a, a, just a black line. But that's what we want. So go back to this path over here. Make sure you click on your path. Now you want to click on this little squiggly line. This is the object data properties for the path. And next we're gonna to go to geometry, object, and then click this little eyedropper thing next to the object, and then move over and click on the square. If that doesn't work, make sure you've actually converted it to a curve and it's not still a mesh. And as you see here, this line has now turned into this like square. And the coolest thing about this is you can go tab into edit mode and you get, it looks different to normal edit mode, but you get this line and you can kind of like curve it around. And this is what is so useful for so many things. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go into aerial view with seven on my number pad. And then I'm gonna, you know, before I do that, I'm gonna go number one on my number pad and move this up a bit. Select everything, do G and Z to move it up. And if you want to make it a bit smaller, you can either do it with this square and make it smaller, or you can go into edit mode and just select a vert and do Alt S. So you want to make the whole thing smaller, just select them all. Alt S will shrink them. Or if you just want to make a few of them smaller, Alt S will make them smaller. So basically, this is a pretty cool feature you might want to do. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to go to the aerial view with seven on my number pad. And then do G and Y. And I'm going to kind of like move these points into the position that I want them to be to make a circle. You know, as long as it looks good um, when it's done, and you, can, you can just select these points, by the way, and just do E to extrude. It's just like normal, E to extrude to add another point. And yeah, this is starting to come together really, really nicely. If I just keep adjusting these points to create that strap look as I want it. Uh, and I'm gonna shrink these end ones as well. These end ones I want to be shrunk where they kind of connect to the mask. And I definitely wanna tuck them in a bit better. G and X, something like that. And then G and X, something like that. And there we go. Actually looks pretty, pretty cool. But this, if I actually go into wireframe, there is so many vertices there. It is ridiculous. You can easily change this. Just go here to uh, in object data properties to resolution preview and just you can turn it as high as you want it. Something like that will work for me. It's nice. The whole thing is quite low poly now. This whole mask is only 214 vertices. And to finish up, I would just personally go highlight them all, make sure that there's like a there's an orange glow around this one, and then a yellowy glow around the mask, and then uh, go on your keyboard, do Alt C, and instead of converting to a curve, convert to a mesh, 
and then do control J. This is basically merged them both now and they both have applied all their modifiers and they're both a mesh. As you can see, we have a really nice mask here. Super simple item to make, but you know, it, it's quite a quite a tough one to make when you're a beginner. I really hope this enjoy you enjoyed this and if you found it helpful, please leave a like and subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. If you want to know how to texture item, watch one of these two videos. There are two different ways you can texture your UGC items. Please leave a like and subscribe and yeah, I hope you find them helpful.